Hello, hi everyone, and welcome to the TSMU Q&A series. I'm your host, Sky, and if you don't know who I am, I am the brand partnerships person on the TSM side, and we're actually joined by a very, very special guest today, the one, the only, Matt Steenstra. Hey, hey what's up, guys? He is the Influencer Partnerships Manager at Icon, and we're really excited to learn more about the influencer side of the gaming industry. For this Q&A, we'll be pulling questions from our TSMU Discord. So if you have a question, please let us know and head on over to the Discord at discord.gg slash TSMU. And ask all of your questions in the Ask Stream Questions here channel. Once you ask your questions, Join the waiting room voice channel and wait to be selected to join us on the show. While we're getting uh, people settled in and getting their questions in, Matt, why don't you let us know about yourself and what you do as a influencer partnerships manager? Yeah, no, definitely. So I am an influencer partnerships manager at Icon, which is a gaming centered talent agency. Uh, basically, Icon is related to TSM in that we're sister companies, but separate legal entities. And um, yeah, we're made up of um, talent that range from Doublelift, Myth, Eco, DAF. And uh, my job as a partnerships manager is essentially to take partnerships that have been sold through by our sales team and execute them for the clients that are uh, part of the partnership, but also the influencers. And my job is basically a liaison between Icon the clients and the influencers and making sure the partnership runs smoothly for both the client and the influencers so everybody's happy nice and i, I think that's really exciting and I, I hope you guys get to learn more about matt's role and what he does so uh, i believe we have a caller today um streep welcome on by hello hi and welcome mm -hmm. um i i'd love to hear some of the questions you have for matt today yeah, of course. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm super excited to be asking you questions, Matt. Um, I'm looking to actually get into the influencer management and partnership man management side of esports. So um, it, it's awesome to be able to ask you questions. Um, so my first question is, as someone who has been working with influencers for a couple of years now, I'm sure you have acquired a lot of skills and areas you wouldn't originally think go hand to hand with your position. Um, what are some of the things you do on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis that you had no idea correlated to the job as an influencer partnerships manager? That's a very great question. Um, <clears throat> that's awesome to hear that you're interested in essentially what we do. Um, it's definitely not a, I guess, fan-facing part of esports, but it's definitely like a crucial part of any esports team. So that's really cool that you kind of identified that and you're interested in that. Um, very good question skills that i didn't realize would be needed for the job is essentially what you're asking um i would say um the most interesting thing is i wouldn't say it's necessarily one skill i think it's more about being adaptive um i think every day in our job we come across situations that i've never come across before um you're kind of sometimes learning as you go but also just you know using your past experience um to kind of inform the decision to be made about this situation that came up. Um, I can, I see not, uh, I see Sky nodding because constantly there's, there's things that come up with like a client has a change for something or the influencer didn't wake up or, you know, there's just so many different situations. It's more about being adaptive and being able to, I guess, effectively communicate both sides, client side and the influencer side. Um, I would say if, if you want to land on a specific skill, I would say, like communications huge, but also being very attention to detail oriented. Um, I can't tell you how much of the job is triple quadruple checking your work because if you have one typo on a tweet, it's game over, you know? Like, so I think those are things I didn't anticipate as being such a big deal, but they're crucial everyday deals or details for the day to day. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Yeah, communications definitely, I, I haven't been, doing uh i i figured out that i wanted to be uh i wanted to pursue a career in like influencer management and partnerships like nine months ago for the past nine months i've been working with influencers and stuff like that and like communication is one of the most important things i uh 
see. And I guess a follow up question to that is how do you communicate well with an influencer you're working with without coming off as pushy, right? Um, sometimes they just, ha like you said, maybe they just sleep in or they just don't have uh, great communication skills and staying on top of stuff. And part of like your role is to make sure that they get things done. How do you communicate effectively that like, I'm kind of doing this for you and this is to help you and I'm not just being pushy, I'm not being annoying. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, that's definitely, you've kind of hit on something that's, that's actually pretty, um, advanced for our role is kind of balancing that communication with influencers. Cause I mean, you run the gamut of influencers that used to be, um, you know, engineers or people that this is their first job out of high school. Uh, you know, so every influencer is different and how they react to communication is different. I think one thing that's helpful is, is kind of training them to understand that, um, you know, yes, these deal flows are coming in and that you're getting deals because of your current situation. But if you aren't, you know, executing these deals or, you know, not being responsive or being difficult to work with, like these deals aren't just going to keep coming in. Essentially, you have to work to maintain these relationships. And, and oftentimes there are the most effective relationships or the most effective partnerships are the ones that are um, reoccurring, like renewing. Those are the easiest ones to secure and, and usually drive the most revenue. So I think just having them understand that this is a job at the end of the day and not something you can just opt in and out have based on how you're feeling that day. Yeah, thank you so much. Totally makes sense. Um, I guess to follow up on that again um, is as a broad thing, the esports industry kind of lacks a clear path to success, right? Um, and there doesn't seem to be quite a formula on how to obtain the position you desire. And I think that's especially uh, true for influencer management and partnerships management. Um, other positions like event operations, team managers, social media executive are starting to become more like fairly known with like a bunch of resources coming out to help them uh, understand the roles better. Right. And I feel like influencer partnership management lacks the acknowledgement right now and therefore has very few resources to help you get your foot in the door. Um, what advice do you have for people looking to get into this side of esports? We do lack acknowledgement. <laughs> I love that. Um, it's a good question. That's interesting that you kind of touched upon that, that there's no book, I guess, on how to do the job that I do yet. Stay tuned. Um, <laughs> but um, it's a good question. The What you kind of touched on about the path to success to esports is kind of a difficult one because I, I kind of have a uh, my own opinion on this in that I feel that esports is still pretty small in my opinion and by the industry by an industry being small the amount of jobs is not you know as easy to come by so for instance my path to becoming or working in esports wasn't necessarily like my goal was esports um, my I received experience by working at an ad agency. I worked at another esports gaming talent agency. Um, so I think one of the things that's it's kind of important is that it's kind of hard to get your dream job on the first go. Like you graduate college or you decide you want to get a job, I'm going to work in esports. I love the enthusiasm, but it's not necessarily as clear cut as that. It can be really difficult. Um, so what I would do, what I would um, in, advise anybody that's looking to work in esports is kind of, you know, write down all of the esports companies you can think of and check all their websites and see if there's jobs available. Um, and if there are, apply to them. And if you get it, great. But if you don't, you don't give up. You more so find companies that are in the industry, but not necessarily esports. So there's tons of talent agencies. There's tons of uh, video game developers. There's tons of, um, you know, marketing, gaming marketing agencies. So you don't necessarily, your first job doesn't necessarily have to be in esports, but if your end goal is esports, I think it's crucial to develop skills and kind of learn about the industry to learn about advertising um, through other roles at other companies. So I, I like the enthusiasm about joining esports right off the bat, but that, that can be difficult. And a lot of people that I know work in esports, uh, it's not typically their first job. 
Yeah, I can definitely like relate with that. Uh, I've been doing just internships and in, like social media uh, and just like roles that aren't specifically what I want to do. And I recently just landed one as a uh, um, working with partnerships and influencers, which I'm excited to finally do. Um, but yeah, uh, that's something that I kind of did was do other roles, build up my kind of skill set, and kind of translate it to there. Um, to kind of build up on that, how do you translate? kind of like internships and volunteer stuff you do for free right just to build up your skill set to finally land in it land in that job like um how, how do you kind of sell yourself for that um uh, i mean you've done a pretty good job of of selling yourself in this call i mean i think that's super rad that you took initiative to uh work with influencers on your own and and try to um learn the job on your own i think that that's really impressive. And I think that that's something you should ask, absolutely put on a resume or a cover letter. Because if if I was hiring an entry level position at an esports company for influencer management, and I come across a resume where somebody took the self initiative to kind of, uh, you know, learn the role on their own, like, that's amazing. That's a home run. So as far as turning it into a paid job, I mean, at the end of the day, you do have to find that open position and apply for it. But I mean, I think you're halfway there. I think you just got to put all of the stuff you just said on a resume and just apply for um, all the jobs you can find in and around the industry. And I think you'll eventually land in esports if your drive is there. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you. That was my last question. But thank you for coming on here, because I know, like, uh, as we, I said before, like, influencer management and partnership management doesn't really get acknowledged as much as other roles in esports. And I feel like if more people kind of just knew about it, they would be interested in it. So thank you so much for this. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for your interest and thanks for the questions. Appreciate it. No problem. Yeah, thank you, Straight. <clears throat> I think that's a lot of good points that we should really just take a look at in terms of acknowledgement in the partnership side, right? Um, we are kind of not that front facing role. However, um, we do a lot that people are pretty familiar with, whether it's a marketing campaign you see on social media with an influencer um, or with a team. So uh, shout out to Streep. Thank you so much for stopping by. And um, thank you, Matt. Those questions and answers were amazing. <laughs> um, so I have your first uh, question or second question or a couple. Um, what is your favorite campaign that you've worked on? That's a good question. There's so many that I'm proud of. Um, I would say one that I'm particularly proud of is something that kind of came together through multiple teams at TSM. And uh, that would be our partnership with Samsung and Myth. Um, last year, we executed a pretty cool video um for samsung uh promoting their samsung galaxy tab and uh, it was pretty cool awesome yeah i remember seeing that campaign and i enjoyed every moment of it uh could we take a look at that video sure. the cake okay come on I hope the cake isn't burnt. Come on now. Oh! <laughs> oh, okay, it's a little bit toasty. Coach can fix that. Oh, maybe Coach can't fix that. All right. Shoo, that is toasty to a crisp. See here now. 30 minutes? I have it. We're going to bring out the Texas twist, baby. Come on. Woo! Make it happen. Hit your shot. Get it. Oh, come on. Are you kidding me? You're going to miss that. Ah! The cake was hot. I'm tired with this team. I'm tired of being coach. And I'm tired of trying to do nice things and bake cakes. Thanks. I think that was an amazing campaign and it was so fun to watch. Um, shouts out to Samsung and to you guys as well. Yeah. Uh, can I give a little bit of context on that video actually? Yeah. Let's uh, learn more about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, I think the reason why we picked that video is that um, it kind of it kind of encapsulates kind of the full scope of the job sometimes. And that was Samsung wanted to execute a video with Myth promoting their Galaxy Tab. And that was the instructions. 
And so my job is to take those instructions and then kind of work with a myth and our TSM's content team, which did an incredible job. Shout out to Shane and everybody else on the team that came up with the idea and shot it. But there was a lot of back and forth as far as, you know, creating the idea, communicating that idea to myth, him, get, uh, him you know, giving his spin on it, and also providing that idea to Samsung, getting their approval, shooting it. So there's so much work on the back end to make that video happen. And when you have an influencer that's as enthusiastic and as creative and as excited and and as fun as Myth, I mean, that content is just all him, just you know, promoting that Samsung tablet, which at the end of the day got really good results as far as metrics are concerned, but also the community responded pretty well to it. There's tons of comments on Twitter from his fans and also people in the industry that really like that video. And um, I think that that's an example of everything kind of coming together. You know, client was stoked, content team was stoked, client, uh, myth was stoked. So just a uh, great piece of content all around. Yeah, and, and just to, to, to segue in there real quickly in terms of just creatives for marketing campaigns, I think what's really important is just the genuineness of like an, an activation. Uh, in your experience and opinion, how important is that in terms of having someone like Myth be able to collaborate with a brand saying, hey, this is something I think I'd love to do with a, with you guys. This is an idea I'd like to go with. You know, how, how do you facilitate that type of stuff and how much, how important is that in general? Like the authenticity of it? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I mean, that's that's so crucial. I think that's that's the biggest piece is that you want everybody to buy in. Like you want the client to be bought in, they love the idea. You want Myth to be bought in because he's the one that's going to be executing it and the one that's really going to be, you know, doing actually the heavy lifting as far as creating the content. And um, I think the other piece with that and something that's like very important, I would say in partnerships, but also influencer management is, um, Viewers and fans of content and viewers of content, you know, are smart and they can sniff out if something isn't authentic and isn't organic and doesn't fit the channel or doesn't fit the person. So there's a lot of times where you have to kind of massage something so that, you know, that it works for everybody involved. And I think that when you get something that is authentic at the end of the day and everybody's excited about it, then, you know, the fans and the viewers are excited about it as well. Yeah, thanks so much for answering that question. We have another call today, and it is a familiar face. Xenos King, um, welcome to the call. And, you know, it's been a while since I've talked to you, but how are you doing? And uh, what are the questions you have? Hey, Sky. Hi. <laughs> Good to see you. And uh, Matt, thank you so much for, for doing this. This is actually really great content. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. So uh, I create educational content surrounding all aspects of branding that helps uh, creators mostly and also students um, in our industry. And so I had some questions on branding. And I know as a um, agency, you guys, you know, obviously work with a lot of brands, but also the influencers that you guys take care of. So what are some of the biggest challenges to helping creators continue the growth of their personal brands, such as connecting them with the right brands to work with or collaborating with other creators and even the innovation of their content that um, obviously, you know, has to make sense to both their brands and the audience that they serve? Uh, that's a really good question. I had to write that down because you, you brought up some really interesting pieces there. I think <clears throat> as far as like elevating their brand and kind of helping them build their brand, it's it's really a two-way street, I would say. Um, the, the person that knows best what serves um, a content creator's audience is the content creator. Um, you know, they started from nothing, built their audience up and got to where they are. Um, so I think what is super crucial is you know, talking to them and getting their feedback on kind of like, what's the direction that they want to go with their content? Because at the end of the day, you want them to be excited about what they're doing. So I think first and foremost, it's it's getting on a call with them. It's having constant communication with them and kind of figuring out this is this is the direction I want to take the stream. And this is kind of like how I want, how I envision growing my brand. And then what we do as a talent agency and as a team is that we get together 
and kind of you know take their input and also kind of give our spin on it either give feedback or kind of be like hey well we're also noticing you know these these trends or these directions as far as content is concerned like is this something you're considering or maybe like we give them basically uh, recommendations or just feedback based off of their input but also what we see in the industry so i think once we do that, you kind of just come together and collectively figure out ways to to grow the brand. Because I think it's a, a two way street. I think both both parties can help elevate the brand. Mm, yeah, you get a real um, you give a really good point there. What happens if the creator is a little bit confused? You know, I think in every person's career, there's a time where they kind of plateau and they felt like, all right. I've done a lot, but then now I'm not really sure where to go next. Um, how do you guys as a talent agency help facilitate that discussion to take them to the next level or maybe just even the next place that they uh, need to be, right? Whether that might be like a horizontal shift. Mm. That's a good question. Um, that's a really good question. Um, what I would say or what I, if, if, if that was an influencer talking to me about or a content creator talking to me about you know, feeling that they've plateaued or not sure what what they want to do. Um, you know, I would encourage them to um, kind of consider what what they want to do. Uh, sometimes I think what's super understated and not used enough is taking breaks from content. Um, I think a lot of times influencers are just so always on and grind so much that sometimes that they can just get burnt out or they just lose sight of kind of maybe what they want to do so i i would either encourage them to either take a break and you know kind of sit on it and and think about what they want to do or maybe try some other games or try content that they haven't done before and see maybe like um oh maybe i'm really interested in um gta rp or i'm really interested in tft or strategy games or something like there are so many games for every type of person and there's so much content on twitch that i wouldn't necessarily worry about finding the right piece to make them get bigger and bigger but what what's the best content for them to create that will keep them happy because at the end of the day we want happy influencers Exactly. Right. So then if they're happy, then their audience obviously uh, benefits from it. Um, I know we have a lot of people in line, but you said something that made me want to ask another question. Would that be all right with you? Sure. So w when it comes to, you know, maybe making that pivot, making that break and wanting to try other games, sometimes when a creator is kind of... Um, you know, let's say they've been around for a while and they establish themselves with a specific type of game. Um, there might be some students who are also interested in creating content or working with other creators. How do you help creators with the challenge of trying to promote themselves instead of just the game that they play? Um, if you if you know what I'm saying, you know, falling into the trap of declining viewership or losing a lot of the engagement because they don't play a particular game anymore. Mm. That's a good question. Um, one thing that we kind of recommend to influencers if they're trying to transition out of a game is to play the game that they, they normally play, but also end the stream with an hour or two of another game. Um, just kind of, um, A, showing, you know, their fans that there's this other type of content that I'm also interested in, but also kind of train, not training the audience, but kind of just, you know, um, I've played the game that I usually play, but here's me playing another game. And, you know, it's still the same person. It's the same personality. It's the same, you know, content creator that you enjoy just playing a different game. And maybe they might find out that they're actually really interested in this other game, the fans being. Um, so I think it's baby steps, I think. It's it's hard to just jump transition to another game or another type of content. But I think maybe, you know, baby steps or slowly transitioning is maybe the better play there. Awesome. Yeah. And I think eventually they could start transitioning more into um, having their audience be there more for the person's personality rather than just the game. So like you said, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, you know, I hope you guys have a good night, Sky. Great seeing you again. Let's catch up soon. And um, once again, thank you guys. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And it's great seeing you on here.
Um, so yeah, I think that's a lot of amazing questions, just learning more on the influencer side and how you build yourself as the influencer, right? Um, so great questions, Peter. Thank you so much. And we have another voice caller today. Uh, we have Amit coming in. Welcome, Amit. How are you and how is your day going? I am actually Oh, uh, apologies on that. Uh, Carlos, <laughs> welcome to the call, Carlos. Um, how are you doing today? I'm doing amazing, enjoying all these knowledge bombs that were getting dropped by Matt. Fine. <laughs> He's anyway. the wise wizard of the partnership side. All right. Anyway, so my question was, um, how do you work with influencers who are used to running a solo show? Do you try to convince them that you're a valuable resource or do you kind of let them run their solo show? Um, that's a good question. Um, so I think what's interesting, well, th that's a tough question because essentially if we were like communicating with that person, then we'd be interested in, in signing them to our agency. Um, and then we find out that they do everything on their own already. What I would do as far as like outreaching to that person and, and trying to see if they're interested in, in joining our agency is kind of, you know, explaining to them who we are, what we do, but also who we worked with. Uh, you'd come to find pretty regularly um, a lot of people on Twitch, a lot of content creators are connected by some way, you know, a friend of a friend or their direct friends. And we work with so many content creators that I'm sure that we could find somebody as a resource that, you know, hey, if you're interested in working with Icon, here's all the resources and here's all the things that we do for our talent, but here's also our our roster of content creators if you ever want to reach out to them and kind of get another opinion. Um, I think that that's a pretty effective tool as far as, you know, giving them the option of signing with us. But I mean, if a content creator at the end of the day wants to do their own solo show and, and run everything themselves, then all the power to them. Awesome. That was actually really just all I really had for my question, because I wasn't sure if it was like um, talent would come to you guys, or let's say if TSM also signed a talent, talent creator. I wasn't sure how that relationship would work between someone that was just used to running everything themselves on their Twitch channel. Yeah, I, it goes both ways. Um, I would say that, you know, our agency reaches out to talent for sure. And there's also talent that are interested in just joining in, uh, agencies. And there's no problem with talent reaching out to different agencies and kind of, you know, getting information on all of them and kind of making their own decision on, on where they want to move. But yeah, that's kind of, it goes both ways to answer your question. Awesome. Well, that was all for me. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Carlos. That was a great question. And I hope that uh, shared more insight on the influencer side and how they get picked up at, from agencies. Uh, we have another call today. Apologies, Amit. Come on joining us today. Hello. Hi, and welcome. How are you doing today? Hello. Yeah, that was super trippy because you said Amit. And I was watching the stream and I was like, wait, I'm not in the correct voice call yet. Um, yeah, hello, my name is Amit. Uh, I'm a sophomore at San Jose State University, and I'm just trying to learn a little bit more about like influencer sponsorships, those partnerships, because I'll be interning this summer um, at Coursera as their marketing esports and sponsorships intern. So I don't really know a crazy amount of stuff. So I just wanted to ask, like, do you have any tips for someone new going into it, like, without, like, you know, like, I understand, like, streamers, like, I watch streamers and everything, and I have, like, some knowledge about it, but, like, any tips? going in that I should know of, maybe like some scary things, maybe some good things, like anything. I'm open ears. Um, <clears throat> that's a good question. Um, for me, I would say there's so many sponsored campaigns being run on Twitch. I would encourage you to try to find them out and watch them. Like mm -hmm. if you're just scrolling through Twitch and you see a hashtag ad, mm -hmm. watch the stream and kind of see essentially, because there's so many different ways to run a sponsored stream. There's also tons of sponsored social media posts, Twitter, Instagram. I would kind of just, you know, kind of look at them and, and see, um, A, what it what it's about. Maybe look at the copy or the the writing of the, the social posts and kind of see like how it resonates with you. And maybe you like the sponsored piece or you don't like it. I would just kind of, um, kind of take a mental note of just like, oh, I liked this because of this, or I didn't like this because of this. 
um, you know, there's tons of partnerships out there and, and you can definitely take feedback and kind of make your own opinion on, on what you see that's readily available. Um, as far as like getting prepared for your internship, um, I mean, you'll be in good hands at Coursera and, and I'm sure they'll, they'll teach you everything that you need to know. Um, I would just be sure to kind of just take really good notes and kind of just pay attention to all the pieces. Cause I, as I said earlier, I would say the biggest thing with partnerships is attention to detail and being adaptive. Um, just make sure, you know, you're paying attention, you're, you're crossing <laughs> you're crossing your t's dotting your i's and just double checking that everything's incorrect but you'll be in good hands and i i think just being aware and kind of you know just looking into the industry of twitch social media and everything and just looking at existing sponsored work and just you know just checking it out and seeing what you think about it thank you yeah that makes a lot of sense and i do go on social media and twitch a lot so that is a good idea for me to just look around and see what i like and what i dislike and like kind of keep mental notes about it thank you for that and kind of like similar to that is there any like hard skills that you would say like 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 excel powerpoint or something they use a lot of that you like wish that you potentially maybe learn more of uh with like your free time or any type of like platforms like that that you think is useful in like the sponsorship slash influencer side I would say I would say having a base in Excel is useful, but mm -hmm. not completely mandatory. Um, I think with with your side of the business, you know, working with Coursera and, and doing internships and and uh, excuse me, marketing and stuff, I think Excel would be useful. I think you might be utilizing some data there. Uh, nothing too scary, just numbers. But um, <laughs> knowing how to use Excel is is definitely useful. Um, aside from that. Not so much. I mean, if you have a good base on on social media and Twitch, it's it's pretty straightforward. You'll come to find. Cool. And yeah, thanks for all the tips. That really helps because like I'm a little scared going into it, so that really helped. Um, is like just like lighthearted question. Like, what's your favorite memory been while you've been at TSM or just coming into esports? Like, what like what do you love about it? And like, what's your favorite memory? Um, my favorite memory. Um, it wouldn't even necessarily be so much about the esports element of it. I think I just genuinely enjoy all of the people that I've worked with at TSM. Um, right. Before before the pandemic hit, we were all working in the same office and like we all sat right by each other. And you know those days were the best parts because um, you know every day, all day, you know different updates would happen or something would come in, something crazy would happen and we'd all talk about it and we'd all kind of like, you know, figure out maybe what's the best way to, you know, tackle the situation. Not always bad, you know, some are just fun, awesome scenarios that happen, but just working side by side with my coworkers and influencer partnerships and just TSM partnerships management in general and sales and everybody, just everyone's just so enjoyable and, you know, um, it's just such a great atmosphere is, yeah, that's my favorite part for sure. That's so heartwarming. I feel the same <laughs> way. I'm so excited to go back in person and try to like, you know, meet people, go to events. Definitely exciting. Thank you so much for answering my questions. It was nice to meet you both and hope to speak to you guys soon. Have a good rest of your day. Yeah, thank you, Amit, cool. and good luck with your internship. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, honestly, Matt, my heart is so warm that you said that you love working with us at TSM Partnerships. I miss our lunches too. Sitting right across from you was great. So yes. <laughs> hopefully we'll be able to do that one of these days again. But we have another caller, um, Remy, come join us today. Remy, how are you doing? And uh, give give a little note about yourself. Oh, hey, I am Remy. And at first, I apologize for my I apologize for my very bad English because I am from Poland actually, and it's pretty late for me. So. <laughs> So, so you know, and uh, my question is, what type of approach do you find more useful in your job? Would you prefer rather being more strict, like uh, trying to be stick more to the paperwork and having everything sorted out with a lot of backup plans? Or do you find uh, the, the approach more loose, better to when you sometimes go for a full improvisation? That's a really good question. And you might not like my answer, and I know how my coworkers know how I work, so they'll they'll know that I strive for I guess more strict, more paperwork by the book. But you come to find that you you start off that way, and then something will change and something will happen, and you'll have to adapt. Like that's just the nature of the job. So you know I do start off 
you know, wanting to stick by, you know, the rules or the paperwork and, and kind of go by, you know, guidelines that we have. And obviously we'll always follow those as much as we can, but it just, our day is just so different every day and you just have to be adaptive. Um, you know, people, the interesting thing about the influencer industry is that it's, it's very much people issues and people problems like those aren't those are more complicated than just the math isn't adding up in a data problem you know that can easily be figured out but with people it's it you have to be adaptive because you have to be able to communicate certain scenarios so i would say personally my approach is to be strict and by paperwork and guidelines but at the end of the day there are adaptive pieces that are weaved in all right, thank you. I see. Like uh, this is actually the 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 answer that I was like expected from you, sort of, because like I I do also like as well the being like more strict in like the what I am doing, which is like the team manager, etc. And uh, I actually was like wondering, do you have like any sort of uh, like schemes of like how do you work like when when you actually like do so do do this type of work so for so long time. Uh, sorry, I, I missed the first part of your question. Um, I was asking about, do you have any sort of schematic, some some sort of schemes in like how do you uh, approach any certain situations? Yes, like uh, how do I you mean, work? yeah, no, absolutely. For me, it's when a partnership starts, I think there's, I have like our team personally has created this document that kind of encapsulates all the pieces that we need from the client when a partnership starts. So it's kind of like, um, you know, getting assets or graphics or messaging. Um, so we do have like schematics and we do have like documents and, and kind of a workflow of how we would like a partnership to go, you know, securing the assets, working with the client to figure out scheduling and all that, and then working with the influencer. So I think it's, it's definitely, you know, scheduled and there is a schematic for what we do. But um, it's just sometimes it's in different orders just based on who's available and, and how the partnership's going. But um, I would say, yeah, there's definitely um, structure to it. All right, thank you. And last like sort of topic for me, from me is, I know you've mentioned, and it was mentioned before in this Q&A, about the uh, partnerships and the uh the partnerships of influencers that were like very successful and my question is actually the opposite do you have do you recall any like the partnerships that weren't that successful and would you like to share with us with them if if you recall any of them actually yeah i um it's a good question i would say there are i mean there are partnerships that just don't work out well as far as you know, meeting a specific goal or something, and that's that sometimes just can't be helped. It just wasn't maybe a good fit, or you know, there's there's so many different reasons why potentially a partnership won't work out. But that's also why we test out or why clients test out partnerships with influencers is to kind of see like what works for their brand and what doesn't work for their brand. So I say it goes both ways. But as far as um, partnerships not working out, I mean, there's um, I won't say personally of my background, but like there are stories of the in the industry that are famous. Like there's the the Jericho McDonald's sponsorship where he accidentally called it a Whopper, and uh, that didn't go over well. Or you know, I've I mean I personally have had an influencer that was supposed to go live at 9 a.m. and they went live at 6 a.m. and it was just a, a miscommunication of time differences. Um, you know, stuff like that happens, people saying, you know, the wrong brand, as I've said, um, you know, not showing up for a stream. Like there's there's tons of partnerships that haven't worked out and there's just so many different stories and different reasons why they don't work out. Um, but yeah, obviously when those situations occur, it's on us to kind of communicate with the client and kind of try to fix those problems in real time, which is always pretty fun. But um, yeah, there there's definitely partnerships that haven't worked out, but that's I think that's the nature of the industry. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you for your answers and have a nice day. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Thank you, Remy. Yeah, Matt, um, I think it's really great to just know that at, at the end of the day, like there's no such thing as like a perfect run, right? We're gonna get like struggles within the partnership side, whether it's a successful campaign or a tough campaign where, you know, something gets miscommunicated. miscommunicated. So great answers there. Um, 
I, I believe we have another caller. Colin, come right in. How are you today? Hi. Um, can you hear me? It's yeah, we can hear you. I'm good. You guys? Yep. I'm uh, doing great. It's uh, your typical, I believe, Wednesday. Um, I think it's Wednesday. I think I all think the it days is have Wednesday. <laughs> it's, a been, little... it's been a bomb. I, I think uh, with everything that's been going on this past year, every day feels like the same day. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, call it. That's well, an understatement. Well, first of all, I'm a freshman at East Los Angeles College and I'm a freelance videographer. So um, my question was like when it comes to creating campaigns with certain brands, like what is the production process that goes on between videographers and people like you guys who are the influencer partner managers? Um, that's a good question. Would you say uh, I want to get this right. As a videographer, you're you're capturing the content with the video camera, but are you also like an editor, or is that yeah, you're more? I, of... I'm editing, um, f filming it, everything, production, setting up everything. But uh, for me, I've been doing more work in scenes like music videos and dance productions. So, and I do I, my main interest is esports. So I'm trying to figure out the production aspect of um, any content or or you know um, campaigns that you guys run with you know tsm and other brands. yeah no absolutely it's a great question um i would say that we are very fortunate in that tsm has an incredible content team um they do unbelievable work um they they see it all the way through from ideation to you know going back and forth with the client on feedback massaging their ideas capturing the content there's a a, a whole crew that you know captures the content but also edits they're full on that's what they do every day it's it's a pretty significantly large team and yeah i mean that's that's how our teams um kind of intersect in that when there is a larger video production piece to be done uh you know i'll communicate with the tsm content team and that's kind of where we cross paths there and you know a tsm has a very great and open communication um you know channels and that I can easily reach any content team member whenever I want to, even if it's a very tight turnaround, which is just the nature of the industry sometimes. But yeah. um, as far as like working with videographers and stuff, yeah, TSM and I would say all of esports, I would say each esports team usually has a content team and a, that's definitely comprised of videographers and editors. So I think if you're interested, it definitely keep an eye out for all these different uh, esports um, teams and, and their content teams and if they're hiring. And on the other side of it, we also do work with brands and sometimes brands want to use their own production companies. So mm -hmm. I think that's another um, way that esports does get tied in with um, videographers that aren't necessarily in-house, but often, you know, on brand side as well. Um, there's a lot of touch points for that. Yeah. So like earlier, you touched base on the, the campaign with Myth, Myth and Samsung. And how you know you guys really wanted Myth to buy into the campaign you guys were building. Mm -hmm. um, how often do do brands come with their own vision of a campaign they want, and how often do you guys pitch them ideas? Like what what goes through the process of getting the green light from the brand to film this certain you know campaign? Um, <clears throat> that's a great question. I wanted to write that down. Um, so it's interesting because every client's different, right? Um, there are some clients that are like, okay, this is the product we want to promote and this is our idea, right? So what we'll do is we'll take that idea and we'll share it with our, our content, uh, creator and say, Hey, this is the idea for the content that the client wants to shoot. What do you think about that? And they'll give their feedback on that idea. And, you know, if they're not a fan of the idea, we'll be honest with the client and let them know like, hey, you know, this idea didn't resonate with the influencer. Um, what's also helpful is that because we have a content team, instead of just saying, no, we don't like your idea, what we can do is be like, hey, this uh, content idea wasn't a great fit for our influencer, but these are ideas that he did like that we think could work with your brand. So as far as uh, a client bringing an idea, that's kind of how we can, you know, take their ideas and kind of get feedback and say, like, does our content team or content member want to use that or not? And then the other way around, we also have awesome clients that are just like, here's the product we promote, we want to promote, give us ideas. And that's 
like our definitely pre pre preferred uh, situation because a our content team is just so great that they come up with such great ideas, but also we can then come to the content creator and be like, what do you want to do? And that's usually nine times out of 10, the best performing content is the one that, you know, is con is influencer driven. Yeah, I, I think I, I'll, I'll add to that. I think what Matt has touched base on is definitely really important, right? Transparency with the client, letting them know like, hey, this is something that we don't think would be, you know, something what would be successful, right? Um, being able to be transparent with the client, but also like, instead of being that no man, like saying no, that that's not gonna work out, you know, try to find solutions, find that middle ground with the client to let them know like, hey, we hear you. We think that this might work better with just some of the brand notes that you might have. So definitely agree with Matt here. I think it's really important to keep that transparency between the client and making sure that again, at the end of the day, we get what they need, whether it's their brand focus or the messaging that they want to get across to, you know, the gaming and esports industry. Thank you. I have one more question, if you guys don't mind, that kind of leads into um, bouncing between I, bouncing ideas between client and, and TSM or esports orgs in general. Um, what happens if they, they tell you that, you know, you have fr creative freedom to just market their item or whatever it is in any way you guys feel is, is fit? But if you guys deliver the final product and the client isn't happy with it, where do you guys go from there? Does the project fall through? Do you guys reshoot, push back the campaign, so on and so forth? It's a good question. Um, what I would say is, is um, <clears throat> excuse me, in a partnership, there's usually so many touch points along the way that you can easily kind of sift out earlier than the final product if the client's happy with the direction something's going or not. Um, so usually, if it's a big project like that, they'll you'll find out sooner than like actually maybe shooting the content that like there there is you know they're not perfectly aligned there. Um, what is a good question or maybe kind of what you're alluding to is what happens if you know you're aligned on the direction and then you shoot something and it's not what the client like kind of had in mind or it's maybe not what they were expecting um that's that's usually a very complicated situation just because you kind of you have to kind of go back to the drawing board as far as like okay well what was agreed upon and did we shoot what was agreed upon because usually it's it's very detailed as far as what the direction is and what the shots are going to be and all of that and if you know we have the instructions for the shoot and we follow the instructions for the shoot that's essentially you know that doesn't have like grounds for a reshoot to reshoot the content because there's a lot of work and a lot of player time and content team time that goes into it so usually what we'll do is we'll try to find maybe something that we can do in, in post edit or how maybe edit the piece in a different way to kind of make that happen but usually i guess the the quick answer to your question is just it would be sifted out earlier than just like the final product got it thank you very much guys it was very helpful at least in my starting starting my career yeah no worries good luck man thank you yeah thanks colin um yeah you know shout out to colin i think it's a great insight to understand again at the end of the day partnerships works with so many departments whether it's the social media side the marketing side or again the videographer video side right you're going to be working with so many different peoples uh, depending on um what the campaign it might be so there's a lot of work that goes behind that um so great questions colin and good luck with your search in the esports world um i have a question for you Matt. Um, this specific question is actually touching base on experience. So a uh, caller or uh, a fan of the TSMU side, um, PG, ask, with you, you having experience garnering partnerships and sponsorships uh, for influencers, do you have any advice, tips for any of uh, those choosing to garner sp sponsorships and brand deals on their own or who are starting to su to seek such deals um that's a good question so i guess the question is is influencers trying to find brand deals um what i would what i would tell somebody trying to find um brand deals is to think about what are products and what are pieces that um i use in my content creation 
right? Like if you are a Twitch streamer, you use a webcam, you use a keyboard, you use a mouse, you use a computer. And I would just reach out to brands that you use every day because I think that that's such a easy use case of, um, hey, these are grounds to sponsorship me or sponsor me because I am on stream every day. I have this many viewers and these are the products I use. And it's just so easy for them to promote a mouse if they're already using it daily. So what I would tell that influencers to kind of think about brands that they use and maybe brands that they're interested in and want to promote. Um, that's usually the, the quickest way to get a sponsorship is to show enthusiasm for a product rather than just cold email everybody and just hope that somebody sponsors you. Yeah, interesting points there. I think it's really important that, you know, again, we go back to that genuine phase where we want you to be passionate about what you're wrapping. And so you should really think about like the things that you really do use on a daily basis, whether it's peripherals or, you know, meal kits or whatever it is, right? So thanks, Matt, for answering that question. And shout out to PG for answer, uh, asking that question. Um, so we have a, another caller coming in today. He just came in. Welcome back, Streep. Uh, what are the questions you have? Uh, you can't get rid of me. I'm sorry. No. Uh, <laughs> on, like the conversations that like I heard, um, uh, two more questions basically popped up. Um, so one of them is going back to when you were talking about uh, when things kind of don't go your way, right? Uh, and let's say a partnership just doesn't work out, like um, the numbers weren't met or whatever. Kind of dealing with that side of it. Uh, it's a two-part question. How do you deal with companies that are asking for more deliverables than what is initially in the contract? How important is it for you to keep that relationship strong while also not kind of, I don't want to say abusing the influencer, but like, making sure like, hey, you didn't ask for this right away. Um, like, how do you kind of balance that? Uh, I mean, the, the, the easy answer to your question is um, we typically don't. Um, if, if there's an ask that comes in after the contract is signed, like mid campaign, that's, that's typically something that we don't do unless it's like a, a partnership that like the influencer is very passionate about or wants to do on their own accord. Um, what we want to do is we want to, um, you know, make sure that the influencer isn't pressured into doing more deliverables than what they signed on for. Um, so essentially, when we present them a deal and this is what they agree upon, we try not to, you know, mess with that or, or try to add more deliverables afterwards because that that's just not fair to the the influencer. Of course, and then kind of jumping on top of that is when, for say, like partnership doesn't go well. Let's say they put out a YouTube video, they usually get 700,000 views. It, it got 300,000, right? Um, a, a lot of times in industry, um, make goods are probably uh, looked at after that to uh, keep the relationship with the um, partnership strong. Um, how do you come, like, what if an influencer has no, like, interest in doing a make good, like, has no, uh, shows no signs of, like, kind of wanting to make make up the fact that the company didn't get what they were looking for is it just basically something you can't really do anything about uh because that can just hurt relationships between company and let's say the the agency yeah i mean that's a that's a really good question it's it's for sure a case by case basis um at the end of the day if an influencer doesn't want to do it and they um, you know, try to execute the campaign to the best of their abilities, then we wouldn't force them to execute and make good. Um, that's just something that we would handle with the client and manage that relationship um, off of that. Um, that's a that's a <laughs> that's a definitely a long road to go down, like as far as like getting into the nitty gritty of how to communicate all that. But that's that's typically if, if the influencer at the end of the day or the content creator doesn't want to do it, then they don't want to do it. And it's kind of on our team and then uh, to kind of work with the brand and kind of communicate that. Yeah, so uh, I guess to ask, is it more important to keep the relationship, of course you want relationship strong with both the influencer and the company or part whoever you're getting a partnership from, but is it more important to keep that relationship strong with the influ influencer rather than with the company? Um, I would say with the influencer first. Um, most of the time we're, we're influencer first. Um, you know, there are very rare occasions where that is different, but um, I would say most of the time, definitely we want to side with our talent and, you know, support them any way we can. Thank you. That, that's it for me, part two.
Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Strape. Um, just to touch base uh, with your past, with working with agencies on the brand side, and now you know you're working on you're working at an agency on the talent side. Uh, how different is it um, in terms of working with the influencers now, and how have you been able to utilize uh, your experience on the brand side to succeed in your role currently? Yeah, that's a, a good question. Um, so my to make a very long story short, my career path has been, um, you know, not straight into esports. My career path was I got a degree in marketing and I got a job at an ad agency because, you know, I loved Mad Men and I thought I wanted to work in advertising in that ad agency. So I got a lot of experience working um, as a media planner and working with brands uh, such as Toyland. Turtle Beach, Trial and Worlds, managing their digital advertising. And through that job, I kind of learned the core of advertising. Like, what is the goal? What, what are the metrics that we want to hit that mean success for the brand? Um, I think that that experience was so valuable because it made me understand kind of what brands are trying to achieve and what metrics are important in order to achieve those. So taking that knowledge and then applying it to influencer partnerships it's it's definitely different but at the end of the day it, it's still advertising and we still want to as an agency and with our talent uh through influencer advertising you know reach those goals for the clients if if it's um you know a vpn company that wants to sell more vpn subscriptions then you know we kind of um try to utilize our our experience and kind of come up with a campaign that will help um, the brand reach their goal, but also work with the influencer as far as the, what they want to do for the content. So I think the the brand side of it was so crucial, and I would highly encourage anybody that's interested in working with partnerships or working with um, influencers and stuff is to consider working at an ad agency and working on um, you know different types of advertising that isn't necessarily gaming at first, because you you want to get that core understanding of advertising. Um, because at the end of the day, that's that's what we do, and it's 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 very important. And to get that kind of knowledge is super useful. Basically, what you're saying is that you got the best of both worlds, um, being able <laughs> to have you know that experience of working with brands and understanding brands. When now that you're working with the influencer side, so I think that's definitely some amazing, amazing answers that you've had for this piece, and also all the questions or answers that you had earlier. I think it gives a lot of insight of who we are at the partnership side, what to expect, and you know all that sort. I think the last note to tie it up in a bow a little bit here. Uh, is there anyone or anything that you want to give a shout out to? Any advice you want to give out to to anyone who's interested in esports and partnerships? Uh, great question, Sky. I was not. I wasn't prepared. I should have written all the names down. I feel like I'm accepting an award. I have to name everybody now. Um, shout out to TSM Partnerships. You know who you are. Uh, shout out to my day to day team, Will Boyce. Dylan Watkins, sales team at Icon, Cooper, Austin, you guys know who you are. Um, basically, um, you know, everybody I work with daily, super huge shout out to them because, um, you know, with their help and with their expertise in their related fields, they help me get better at my job. Because one thing that's super useful in, in working at a job like an influencer partnerships manager is that you have coworkers to which you can um kind of bounce ideas off of or bring up a situation of like hey this popped up what do you think about this because this is what i was thinking what do you think and i think getting different perspectives is always uh super useful um so i think that that's that's a the huge thing and so shout out to all of you thank you um as far as advice i would say that my my biggest advice overall is to um i i, I love the enthusiasm and trying to work in esports and i think that that's such a good um awesome piece that you're interested in i mean i love esports um it's kind of funny i have an instagram video uh, in 2013 where i was watching tsm versus um curse at mlg and it was you know i've been a tsm fan for so long and so for me to eventually work for you know tsm is 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 awesome and that was um wasn't the plan but it, it ended up happening and i think that if you're interested in getting into esports um that's a good idea definitely try but if you don't get in the first time like don't give up 
try to get a job that's around the industry. Maybe it's, you know, adjacent, maybe it's in video game company, video game talent agency, what have you. Um, just try to get around the industry and then eventually I, I can see you working yourself in. So yeah, that would be my advice. Yeah, and thank you so much for answering all those amazing questions. Um, I think it is about that time at the moment. So thank you, thank you everyone for attending today. It was great to talk to some of you guys and also get your insights and questions about the partnership side. Um, and also thank you to Matt Steenstra for totally killing it today and giving us more insight on the partnership side. I think we definitely need more eyes on this industry and also this field as well. So shout out to you. Um, so just a couple of things that we want to add into here. Just um, next episode is going to feature a very, very special guest. All of our guests are special. Um, Thomas Will, um, at, I believe on May 19th at 5 p.m. PST. So tune in, come say hello, and learn more about the content and video side. Um, be sure to also follow the channel uh, so we know when uh, you guys know when we're live. Um, and also, Lastly, please don't forget, join the TSMU Discord channel. It's discord.gg slash TSMU. So thank you, everyone. See you soon. And have a wonderful, wonderful evening.